Hi there, my name is Andrew Demachowski. I'm a senior concept artist and illustrator in the film, television, and game industry. I'm currently working on the brand new Flash movie as well as other various game titles. So to start the sketch off, I did a really small sketch on a very small moleskin. And I mean, it's, it's pretty ugly, <laughs> pretty dirty, but because it was so small, I was able to really clearly identify exactly what I wanted to get um, out of the sketch. And you can see here on the same moleskin, I actually sketched additional components uh, of the final piece. Um, I got, I got the girl, we'll just call her the hunter for now. I should know her name from the, from, from the movie, but basically I just kind of sketched ideations that were loosely based on the movie, not necessarily a one-to-one -to -one, uh, copy, so to speak. I mean, her her gun is more of a bazooka in the movie. I, I'm kind of going with more of a, a futuristic rifle. And you can see there, uh, I did a couple sketches of possible potential motorcycles, and you'll see I, I didn't go for the Unipod. I, I wanted to go for something a bit more conventional. I just for the tone I was going for, I just thought the Unipod might be too unique. Just for my taste, just for what I wanted to get across. But yeah, sometimes I actually do scan elements in from a sketchbook and then I'll comp it together in Photoshop to sort of find results. And one of the reasons I like to do this is because I just feel that Photoshop inherently is too clean. I just like the texture, the kind of organic nature that the sketchbook provides. And I like to play around at this phase and sort of surprise myself with potential possibilities. Yeah, you can see I'm just shifting things around, moving things about, using the burn and dodge tool to kind of find my values the name of the game right now is just to have fun I mean I gotta be honest with you <laughs> recording is stressful especially when you're designing like that's at this point I'm just trying to shut my inner dialogue off and I'm trying to have fun but you know it's not always easy and looking at this sketch now, there's a lot of things that could be improved, definitely, with <laughs> the, the gun and the bike. I think I resolve, uh, hopefully, some of those things before I, before I continue on. God, look at that perspective of the wheel. That's not even half, <laughs> half correct. But for the purpose of right now, it's, it's working okay. It's not too bad. Yeah, I think with the design, you know, in the movie, she has a very streamlined, very quite sexual outfit. It's pretty, uh, well, it's pretty iconic. So I wanted to take certain liberties with my own, with my own design. Obviously, I'm going to keep key components like the shoulder pad is pretty iconic. It's got that cool white and black stripe feel to it. And I'm going to keep elements like that. Obviously, I'm going to keep her red, but I'm not going to make her as bright. And I want her to feel just a bit, a, a bit tad more rugged. There's this, there's this kind of sweet spot I'm, I'm going to be trying to, I'm, I'm going to try to hit throughout this whole process. And I, I have uh, in my mind, I, I'm imagining this being in a heavy metal universe. I used to love those covers when I was younger, uh, checking out those artists, uh, contributing, and I just want to hit a bit of that. So, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm just going to be um, trying to prove myself right or, or wrong, if that makes sense. And Yeah, just, it's, it's a weird area. I've never really kind of designed in this world before it's yes yeah, it's, as i said before it's not it's not really cyberpunk it's not really 
uh, steampunk. It's something weird. It, I guess you can call it goth punk. I don't, I don't know if that's even a term, but that's my focus. There's just something so cool about how rudimentary looking and square that initial motorcycle design is. And so I really wanted to keep that. You know, obviously she's a lady. She's pretty curvaceous. You know, her outfit is pretty sensual looking. And I just love the contrast of the bike and just, it's it's interesting to me. Here I'm just lengthening the canvas, trying to, trying to find possible solutions. Eventually I, I kind of ax the bottom half um, because it, I gotta be, I had to be cognizant of the story I was telling. And the story is about, it's about her. It's not about her and the gun and, and, the, and the two guys that you'll see that I'll put in shortly. And so sometimes I, I struggle with that. I, I struggle with trying to say too much. And as y'all know, less is always more. And for her, yeah, for her ankle and her calf area, I'm looking at a lot of motorcycle racer armor, if that makes sense. Their, their suits, their jumpsuits. Yeah, there's some interesting details in there. And so I'm trying to justify where to put metal studs, where to put kind of interesting textures and fabric. And my initial reasoning for wanting to do, to do this in the first place is I was thinking, what would Vampire Hunter D look like if it was shot live action? And I just thought it was an interesting challenge just for me personally. In, in games, you can kind of get away with pushing the silhouette more, kind of being a bit more daring. And I guess you can in film, I think of Bram Stoker's Dracula. That, that film comes to mind to me where the costume designer really, really pushed silhouette both internally and, and and externally. And I loved I love seeing that kind of stuff, but also in film, texture really plays a huge role. That's something that I think costume designers really like to experiment with. Sort of keeping the outside silhouette quite subdued, not not too chaotic. You're not gonna have giant spikes on shoulder shoulder pads on a character. Usually when I'm doing compositions, I like to frame within frames. So, I mean, you can see the lines of the tank are kind of pointing to her head, but also with the with the door of the tank, I'm using that as an element to frame her her head. And yeah, I find those quite quite helpful to do. And for the for the tank, I'm looking at a lot of yeah, old World War 1 tank vehicles, World War 2, Vietnam era. I just like how rusted up and yeah, I guess if it, maybe not rudimentary is the word, but I guess it's a bit primitive in, in the technology compared to now. And I'm always trying to tell myself these days in order for me to go forward with my, with my artistic career, I gotta look back. I feel like everyone's trying to, I see, or at least for myself, I see a lot of artists on ArtStation looking for new technologies and and trying to push things in their concept art, which is so cool. I love seeing that stuff so much. It's really inspiring. But for me, I just think there's so much beauty in in like old technology. That's why I love Japan so much. They're just sort of stuck in in the in the 80s. Like you can order a order a robot, like a fully autonomous robot, as an analogy, and it'll come with 200 sheets of <laughs> fax paper <laughs> that the company will send over to you it's not exactly accurate but i just i just like that i think um i think of ghost in the shell it that's going to be a classic movie forever and the technology looks so tactile you know you can feel it and i just love technology that looks old but it's super high tech at the same time it's such a sweet spot and i don't think personally i'll ever get tired of it you can think of the analogy of the Warthog, which is that sort of Jeep vehicle from Halo. I think it's called the Warthog, if I'm not mistaken. But I remember hearing a story where 
the developers, they, they, you know, that purple spaceship kind of thing where it looks like a hover motorcycle. Uh, don't get mad at me, people. I've never played Halo, but I, you know what I mean. It's like a really fast um, hover motorcycle thing. It's an alien craft and... I think the story goes that the developers thought that people would just be so stoked to to ride on that thing, but it turned out they much preferred riding the Warthog Jeep vehicle, which wasn't a special thing, but the reason why they loved riding it was because it was familiar to them. They kind of knew how a Jeep, Jeep would operate, even though the, the, the motorcycle vehicle, hover vehicle, vehicle was really fast and it maneuvered really well it just uh people are always gonna uh, be more drawn to things that are familiar to them and that's that's kind of how i feel about technology when it comes to to art and design not to say that i don't i don't like brand new technology i love reading about that stuff but visually i just feel like we're a lot more drawn to things that we've seen before things that feel old used uh, things that have personality to it classical things that's why old cars still look great if they're designed well. And why uh, car companies always try to revamp those old designs. Casually just trying to talk over this because this design is not working. I was trying to I was trying to see if I could get a bit more angle in the design. Because at this point I just thought, okay, so if I'm referencing the the Unipod from the movie, it's it's a lot it's real pretty fast. It doesn't really have a chopper kind of feel when it comes to a motorcycle. It's it's like a speed bike. It's pretty goddamn fast. And so I just thought, okay, what if I try to do a design that's more uh, more aligned with that? And it's a, it's an effort, but it didn't really work out. But hey, I'm just playing around. It's all good. And I think I did. I comped together a few versions of the bike and just deleted and kind of masked out areas I I thought were working or, or, or weren't working. Yeah, you can see immediately, like the second I put it in there, nah. It doesn't hit that sweet spot. And hell, I'm not even sure if the final one hits that sweet spot, but to me, this is just, it's too 50-50. It's too, it's like 50% sport bike, 50% kind of tank bike. And I want that ratio to be more 70-30, 80-20. Like 80% tank bike and then 20% can be whatever other kind of bike and yeah, I guess you can say I go for more of a chopper bike. Uh, yeah, the company Dodge. They they did a concept bike and I'll I'll show you guys later as the video series continues. But uh, yeah, it's a, it was a really interesting concept bike and I was taking a lot of inspiration from that and I, I'm pretty sure other other movies did too other designers were looking at that here just figuring out how to maybe it'll have some cool um, where the mirrors are situated it would have it would have cool uh, tactile displays of the surrounding area sort of like how a, a really expensive military jet would have and again I'm keeping in mind of those ratios like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put tech in the bike, it's gonna be that 20%, maybe maybe even less. I just want a little little spot. If I start putting tech everywhere, you know, it's gonna look just kind of hokey. Okay, you can see now I'm I'm kind of getting the message. And the message is square is beautiful, baby. Let's let's hit that. Let's hit that square. And. I just want to, I want to bash myself over the head. <laughs> you know, hey, buddy, you big dummy. Uh, let's get rid of those angles. It's not working. But surely, slowly, and steadily, I'm getting rid of it. I think I ended up with a few, a few angles on the bike, just a bit. For me, I mean, I think certain design principles are true throughout different 
facets of design. You can take the same design principles, and character design, vehicle design, environment, etc. And for me, when I'm designing characters, because that's what I usually do, I usually think that, I, I think of big shapes to medium shapes to small shapes. And I think you have to have uh, a shape. And when, I, I'm, when I'm talking about shapes, I'm, I'm breaking it down like circles, squares, and triangles. And you got to have one I- identifying shape that is, that is, uh, you know, the strongest feature of, of the design you're trying to say. So for the motorcycle, obviously the strongest shape is the square. And if I want to have circles, that would be a secondary. And if I want to have triangles, maybe that would be tertiary. And I'll make it so that they exist within ratios. So maybe like 80% will be the square. You have 20% or not 20%, but let's say 15% would be circles or whatever. And then, and uh, oh man, I'm forgetting math. Oh yeah, and then 5% would be triangle as an example. You break it down like that and then it'll feel, I think it'll just feel a lot more natural. And that's something that I just kind of discovered for myself just looking at nature because it kind of abides by the same principles like that. Nature is the absolute best resource for just studying ratios and how things flow together well in terms of shape design. And I mean, if you ever want to, if you ever want to just get as original as possible and be as individualistic as possible, I, I can't think of a better thing to look at than nature. I mean, flowers, spiders, uh, lizards, and so many cool things, so many crazy color schemes. Yeah, for the gun here, I just want a big, I want, I want her to be holding a big cannon. I kind of want the gun to sort of be uh, an echo of the bike. You know, her tools and her vehicle are square, big and chunky. And she's feminine. She's strong and feminine and more curvy. And she's sort of ruled by the circle if she was going to be ruled by a shape. And I know her, st- her pose is looking quite stiff. It's I have uh, on the shoulder area, I was going to put sort of like a grenade belt. And it's making her look like she's shrugging, but... Don't worry, I fixed that. Or at least... Kinda. <laughs> yeah, and I think I like drawing, especially faces or figures on, on pencil better because I forgive myself a lot more. I, if, I, if I were to do it in Photoshop, I just, I, I just feel like I'd be noodling a lot. Spending just way too long trying to resolve things. I just want to move this thing just want to move this thing forward. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of miss talking about it over there, but uh, I lassoed around the girl, the hunter, the woman, I should call her. She's a woman after all. And uh, yeah, I just, I just filled it in on a multiply layer, a layer on top, and then on that same multiply layer, I, I burned and dodged uh, the values to, to find things, and then after the burn and dodge, I, I was painting. You know, just straight painting with a round brush. Um, you can see on top, there's a there's a on a light layer. I just created a sort of dark gray color and just put it over the whole entire canvas. And that's just so that I don't I don't get bogged down by the black value. It's just so that I can when I'm squinting my eyes while I'm doing this, everything can read uh, you know more simplistically in terms of values. And you, you, you can see with the bike, I, I just did the same thing as I did with, with the Hunter. Sort of isolated it with the lasso tool and, and applied some, some paint. And behind that, I just grabbed a pretty basic cloud brush and just putting in some atmosphere, trying to separate her from the background, trying to get, or trying to establish that mood. Designing bikes, by the way, I'm sure if, Sure, some of you can tell it's it's brand new territory for me. 
<laughs> I had to ask my brother about it, who's a mechanic, uh, how do things work. I actually had him over and, well, he said, I don't know, he said <laughs> that this would work. Uh, there's some areas there where uh, I feel like I kind of, I kind of bullshitted it. And, uh, but it's fine. I, I can, I can forgive myself. I, I can always do a better job next time. But for the wheel there, my, my plan is to have two front brake calibers, which apparently is, is, uh, is more necessary. And then for the back, I'll, I'll have a, a bigger one and just, just a one. And I want the, the back wheel to look quite different from the front wheel. I mean, obviously they're going to be part of the same family, but just just to get a bit of spice, just to get a bit of difference. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm going to do. Sort of have like a, a man. I should really be better at the terminology of these things, but yeah, the the names for these components, these parts of the bike. But yeah, I put a bar in front so that it'll sort of protect the wheel. Or uh, and uh, I'll do research after this. <laughs> Here I'm just putting in a in a big dude. I these uh, the brothers are called the Marcus brothers, and I don't know this guy's name either. This is really making me feel like, wow, man, you really gotta freshen up on your on your names and your memory here. You've been sleeping, but uh, I guess I'm more of a more of a visual creature than any, anything. Yeah, I want this guy to feel like very powerful slow moving lurch type of dude maybe he's got a vest on I, I know i want those fabulous guns to to show maybe he's got some robotic arms you can see later in the process i i i change how the arms look but i was really inspired by ash thorpe's um lost boy series that short film he did I was looking at that that big baddie chasing after that that woman, and he, I just loved how kind of guttural it looked. It looked really creepy and interesting. All those cables sticking out, the spikes. But even though it had a had a nice mood to it, a nice feel, it just wasn't really right. It wasn't quite sexy enough honestly, for what I was trying to get across with this guy. I, I guess sex is a weird word to describe it, but the movie is kind of sexy. It's a, it's a, it's a weird, interesting movie, but I love it. That you can see there, I'm just trying to figure out how would the bicep connect, how would the tricep, like maybe, maybe some parts are organic. Maybe he's kept some, some fleshy bits and other parts are metallic things like that and then i love how he has that huge kind of man it was it called with a i guess you can call it a, a pike axe or not a pike axe but it looks like a hammer with a spike at the end of it badass weapon and then the other the other guy who's more of a a joker character sort of wisecracker um, he's got some cool blades. If if you guys haven't seen the movie, I really urge you to check it out. I think it's actually free on YouTube for whatever reason. It's a high quality version, and it's a great time. Can't recommend it enough. Same guys who did Ninja Scroll, which is a, which is another big favorite of mine. And yeah, the same the same thing for. The big dude over there, just dropping in values, trying to get a quick read. I'm not too concerned with this thing looking pretty. And by the way, as a rule of thumb, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this. If you're ever, ever handing in a sketch, it's always best to make sure that everything you want to communicate is uh, communicated well and clearly. I think I did an okay job with that here. Just hitting those little spec hits, just trying to dictate what's going to catch light and what's not. A good image is just pleasing shapes next to each other. And I, Steve Wang uh, 
told me that, and I thought that was really good advice, or at least a good rule of thumb. So as I'm going about this, that's basically just what I'm trying to do, just come up with pleasing shapes, and when I put that light and layer, that dark gray light and layer on top, the shapes are just uh, easier to see. You can especially tell with the gun and that shadow side of the door. And yeah, I'll be focusing on that. But at least right now it's creating the frame I wanted for the hunter. Man, I don't know what that design is for that jacket. <laughs> it's like, I think because I was trying to, yeah, I had that inspiration from Lost Boy. Ash Thorpe's project, and so I thought, okay, if he's got a patchy jacket, one side could be studded leather, the other side could be maybe some metal plates, something. A bit more ragtag. But these guys aren't exactly living in a post-apocalyptic world. I don't know what it is, actually. Like, you, you never really know what's going on. It's kind of like a western, but gothic fantasy. So cool. But again, I'm not I'm not copying the designs one to one. You can see from the reference shot of the guys that they're quite different looking. I mean the big guy has a tattoo of a cross on his face. I'm I'm taking that inspiration from Lost Boy or, you know, a lot of cyberpunk stuff and kind of giving him a cross for uh, for well I want to say VR lens but I guess that's not actually right it's just an optical uh, attachment on his face I also love the religious symbology in this it's just uh, yeah, it's cool and I kind of got a I, I don't even know if it was intentional but I kind of have a sort of crucifix or cross not crucifix but rather but cross sort of composition and that's kind of cool I'll go with that I like to look at a lot of photography so for this one I found a pretty neat random photograph of a, of a woman on a bike with two two guys next to her and it felt candid like like it almost could be a moment in a film, but yeah, it's not obviously, but I don't really like to catch moments in action. I always like to catch sort of just a slice of life of, of people, if that makes sense. Or sort of just, just like the, the quiet moment before the storm. Yeah, so I'm always thinking about composition, and so in, in, in the case with the knife, I thought, okay, let's just point every single line in the damn composition toward her face, and this is a this is an example of something that you don't actually need. It's, it was creating a tangent because of the angle of the gun and the knife were going in the same direction. They're meeting at a point. See, even now, I can't help but look at that point, so... It took me a while to get rid of it, but I did get rid of it. I actually wish I spent a bit more time on the design. I was just so, uh... I just assumed I would figure out the design in, in 3D when I got there. But I gotta remind myself, it's the same reason why I sketched on paper. Because I actually have a way easier time designing things on paper because there's no option for control Z and sometimes I like to put my left hand behind my back and just draw with my right hand and just, you know, I don't even give myself the option to erase and I feel like my decisions are a lot more concise. I, I think a lot more. Whereas if I were to design in Photoshop or draw in Photoshop, I, I, I don't know, there's just a weird disconnect for me. There's just um, the ability to press Control Z, even though I can, you know, again put my left hand behind my back, it just, it just doesn't feel quite organic. I don't know. Also, I like the fact that the notebook is quite small. I just, 
I believe that if something looks looks strong from a very small size, it, it's got a good potential to look decent in a large size, so. Yeah, you can see I added a bit more detail on the tank. Oh, not the tank, rather, but the bike. And on the big guy over there. Trying to figure out her belt situation. Yeah, in the movie, she... The, the line from her spine to... From her buttocks to down her legs, it's, it's pretty smooth. And... You know, she's got the, those big shoulder, shoulder pads. And then... You know, like that short jacket, but then the rest of her is kind of svelte and long. And like that nice... That really nice shape. Um, and so, I don't... Even though I, she has that big gun there too, which I'm putting in, I don't, I don't want to ruin that line too much. So that that belt I had going diagonally near the low, the low of her back, I it just was kind of messing with that. I think I'm getting near the end here, and. Yeah, you know, it's cool because uh, I'm pleased that I kept it pretty close to the OG sketch. I, I like being proven at least at least half right. But yeah, that pretty much concludes the sketch. You know, you just got to trust the process and yeah, onward. Here we go.